Hello, everybody, and thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Dmitry Levin. I'm the maintainer of Astrays since 2009. And my today's talk is called Evolution of Petrace from Astrays' perspective. So for the next, next half an hour, I'll be guiding you through this murky world of Petrace. So as you probably remember, Astrays is a diagnostic debugging and instructional utility for Linux that's used to monitor and tamper with system calls and signals, and it's an unprivileged user space uh, program that's based on Ptrace API. It's a very powerful tool, but today's talk is not about this. Uh, just happens that because I'm the maintainer of this tool for so long, I've been taking part uh, into evolution of Ptrace API first as an observer, then as a user, and finally as a contributor. So from this perspective, I'll talk about the part of Ptrace API, uh, which is used by tools like Astrace. Uh, I'll talk about its evolution during all these years, what's still broken or missing in the kernel, and what could be done to fix this. Uh, during this talk, you'll see why writing a basic system called Tracer is relatively easy nowadays, but writing a syscall tracer, a distance syscall tracer, necessarily becomes complicated, especially when the aim is to be compatible across architectures and various Linux kernel versions. So what's essentially Ptrace API is? It's the part of the kernel API uh, which provides means by which user space process which is called tracer, may observe and control the execution of another process, which is called tracy. It can examine and change it, its reg registers and memory. And it, the architecture of a typical tracer is relatively simple. Like, it needs to attach a tracy first, then it enters an event loop, and finally, when the tracing is over, it can detach the tracing. So, like, it looks everything, like, quite straightforward, I would say. Uh, so, what is the event loop? Uh, uh, the tracy stops. Uh, when, every time the tracy stops, uh, uh, when a, a traceable event happens, these events, I will talk about them later, are called ptrace stops. The tracer could be notified uh, when it calls uh, a system call from the wait family, such as wait pit, and the status returned by that syscall contains information that describes the, the type of, of the stop, what caused this stop. So while the tracy is stopped, uh, at this stop, tracer can do various things by issuing ptrace commands. Like most commands, uh, besides just a few of them, require the tracy to be stopped. So when, uh, after, after the tracer has to restart the, the tracy to continue, um, because while, while the tracy is in this stopped state, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't receive any, any other changes besides it could be killed, and, and that's all. So, so far, it doesn't look scary, but we are not even closer to to the deepness of this. So, how do you attach a, a tracy? Uh, there are essentially two cases. Either the process you are going to trace already exists, or, or you have to fork it first. Uh, in the first case, traditionally you use ptrace attach command, and the side effect of this command is that it sends six stop signal to the tracy. And when you are forking your own process, you are using another command, it's called trace me, and it doesn't send this signal. And at the first stop, you usually set option, trace options on the tracing. Uh, and of course, because the first six stop is superficial, it's, it's suppressed. Can you spot a potential problem in this design? Well, this six stop is actually the, the six stop that sent by attach is problematic because it could be a race condition with another six stop sent by something else. 
And as a result, the kernel uh, will deliver just one six stop to the tracer and it would suppress it. And at the end, there is a chance that the tracer won't receive any six stop of this two. So about 12 years ago, in Linux 3.4, uh, uh, the trace API was extended with a few new commands. Uh, in particular, there is a new way for attaching traces. Instead of trace attach and, and trace sees, you use, uh, instead of trace attach and trace trace me, you use the trace sees. And at the same command, you can specify the trace options. Uh, so, the trace sees doesn't send any signals, so it's free from that problem. Uh, but to make the trace stop, you use a, a new command called the trace interrupt. So, yeah, it's available quite a long time ago, since quite a long time ago, since Linux 3.4. So unless you have to support all the kernels, uh, you actually can forget about the old interface, uh, forget about this trace attached thing and use the new interface. So since the tracing is essentially about processing trace stops, what are these trace stops? There are four kinds of trace stops, and they have slightly different semantics. And for the tracer, it's important not to confuse them, because otherwise the tracing will go astray and would be pretty useless. Uh, the first type is a signal stops that occur just prior to signal delivery. Uh, system call stops that happen just prior to entering and exiting system calls. There are also group stops that happen when the tracer receives a stopping signal and various kinds of trace events. Uh, let's go through each of these types. Signal stops, uh, they happen right before the signal is to be delivered. Even when the disposition of the signal in the trace is to ignore it. Well, this is the exception of secure, which caused no, sig no signal delivery stop. It caused the, 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 the trace death anyway. Uh, now at this point, signal is not yet delivered. Uh, and so the tracer can tell that it's a signal stop and find out the, the signal that caused this stop by analyzing the, the status returned by wait Pete or other syscall from wait family. So what could the tracer do at this point? Of course it can analyze, it can fetch the SIGIN4 information uh, corresponding to this signal, it can change it, and then it has to restart it, restart the tracing. At this point, uh, it decides uh, whether this signal actually to be received by the tracer or not. Uh, if the signal number is zero, then the signal is not, rece not received. And if it's not zero, then that signal is received. That means that uh, a different signal could be injected instead of the original one. This kind of explains why this uh, signal stop happens even though the signal is ignored by the tracer. Because, well, the tracer can change the signal to another one. So it actually makes sense. Uh, the next stop is a uh, syscall stop. So when, you, when the tracer started using the trace syscall command, the tracer would stop twice, before the entering system call and before the exiting. Uh, the, wait, the status return by wave family contains sick trap as a signal number, and it used to call confusion with a signal, uh, uh, with signal delivery stop, but later a fancy a, a trace option with a fancy name was introduced. Uh, so when it's used, uh, then the seventh bit of the signal number is set, so it's not no longer just a signal, and it's easy to distinguish. Well, nowadays everybody I think uses this uh, trace option because it's available since I don't remember. Well, Linux. 2.4. something. It's quite a long time ago. Uh, by the way, uh, after the, the, the trace is restarted from the syscall enter stop, it's not necessary that the next uh, stop would be 
uh, this is called exit stop. Other, other, other kinds of stops are possible. It could be, it could receive uh, some trace event stop, or it could be, could be an exit if it was an exit, or exit group is called. It could be killed, and well, other things could happen. So, as I said, it's important, very important for the tracer not to confuse various kinds of stops. And it's also important not to confuse syscall enter and syscall edit stops, uh, because they, they provide different information. For example, uh, when the syscall has uh, some arguments with read-write semantics, uh, then some information has to be fetched on entering and some on exiting. And if you are doing syscall tempering, it's crucial to do it in, 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 at the right uh, syscall stop. So what, was, what were tracers doing all these years uh, up to uh, maybe five years ago? They had to check uh, these uh, stops and record and uh, because like kind of every Every syscall enter stop is followed by exit and vice versa, almost. So, yeah, it was very complicated. But five years ago, uh, there was an extension for Ptrace API, and now we have a Ptrace get syscall info API. This command returns a structure that contains uh, information of the nature of this syscall stop. Uh, at this stop, a tracer user usually uh, want to um, fetch information uh, about syscall number, arguments, and so on. And there used to be different ways to do this. Like in the beginning, there was a pick user command that obtained uh, one register at a time, uh, so it was very slow. And later, getrex command appeared, uh, which, uh, which was used to obtain a whole register structures but it was not added to modern architectures, so you can use it uh, in a portable way, because later another command was introduced, uh, which, also use, which you can also use to fetch register sets. It's called getrex set, and it, I think it exists on all uh, supported architectures nowadays. Uh, so yeah, if you don't have to uh, you do, if you don't have to support very old kernels, you're probably safe to use this, but as you can see, all these uh, register fetching um, things are very architecture dependent, and they are also not that quite reliable. For example, they are unreliable on at least one popular 64-bit architecture, where uh, process bitness doesn't always have to match the syscall bitness. For example, on that architecture, 64-bit processes can involve both 64 and 32-bit system calls. And there is a no reliable way to tell them apart by inspecting registers. Uh, can you guess what's the name of this architecture? Well, it's a very popular architecture, actually. Uh, it's x86. Uh, so this is a quite an old example from a, based on a Debian bug report. <coughs> from 2008. This simple program uh, invokes a 32-bit system call from a 64-bit executable. It's just a, a, a syscall number two, which is fork. Uh, so like the program works as, as you would expect, but when being traced, it used to confuse the stress a lot uh, because like uh, it um, it took the syscall as a 64-bit system call, and 64-bit system call number two is actually open and not fork. So the, the, the output produced by a trace had no sense at all, as you can see. Actually, it's some crap from the, some randomness from the memory, and every new invocation would produce something different. So we managed to fix this I mean, we means uh, stress developers who are sitting in this room. Uh, we extended Ptrace API by this new command, which is available since Linux 5.3. Uh, 
by using ptrace get is colon four, you can obtain the whole, the, all the information actually you need, uh, like system call architecture, uh, system call number, arguments, exit status when it's on exit, and so on. What else the tracer does uh, at the syscall stop? It usually needs to, to inspect and sometimes modify the tracer's memory. For example, if it's a string describing, I don't know, like if it's a big structure or a string describing a file name, whatever. So traditionally, there was a peak data, uh, it is common for fetching and uh, for reading and poke data for writing. And it was painfully slow because it worked one word at a time. So later, uh, new, two new system calls were added to the Linux kernel like tw about 20 years ago. There is a process vm read v to read to inspect memory and process vm write v to modify memory. So now you can fetch and write like pages of memory. So it's much, much faster, as you can imagine. Uh, now, the next stop is the group stop. So as I said, then the signal stop is a, is a stop that happens before prior immediately before the delivery of a signal stopper. So when it is re-injected, the actual step happens. And when it's a multi-thread multi process, like a third group, uh, then uh, each thread gets into this uh, wired stop state called a, a group stop state, which is similar to signal delivery stop State, but it's different, and you actually can, the, can tell the difference by using a special command. Uh, or if you're using a new interface, then the, you don't have to use this command. There is a way to distinguish them. So what was the problem with these group stops? Uh, as you probably remember, when the trace remains in, this, in the trace stop, it doesn't run until it's restarted by the tracer. So at this state, it will not send any more notifications. Well, besides the kill death, when it's killed, it, it will send, but it's not, it's a corner case, not, a, not that interesting. So when the tracer restarts the tracer, it's running again, so it's no longer at a stop state. Essentially, ignoring the, the stop signal, uh, I mean, the stop signal was not ignored, but the stop itself, becomes ignored. And if the trace is not restarted from the state, no other events will be reported, and it will not be able to continue running even though a sequence was sent to it. So it was a, a, a real problem with an old interface, and only in Linux 3.4, when PTRACE's uh, API was, was introduced, there is a new way to restart traces, uh, in, this, in this group stop state. Uh, by issuing a ptrace listen command, the tracer is restarted in a way that it's no, it doesn't run, but it uh, can receive events. So the next event, like a signal delivery stop, would be delivered. Okay, the next stop is is a, actually a SIGCOMP uh, event. So all these PTRACE extensions I was talking about uh, fall into two categories. They are either fixing some issues with PTRACE API, with correctness of it, like in case of PTRACE listen, or they uh, help to, um, to work around, uh, to enhance mm, performance, uh, like in case of uh, process uh, VM read V system calls. And second assisted tracing also falls into the second, into the second uh, category. So by generating a second filter, uh, the tracer can, can speed up execution of, of, un of untraced system calls a lot. How a lot? There was a, a famous example of the slowdown induced by the tracing of a, of a syscall-intensive program. 
For example, uh, like if the program is issuing some system call uh, that's not, not actually interesting for the tracer, but where, because of these two stops per each system call, the slowdown is about 50 times, which is, which is huge. By using a SecCom filter, uh, this slowdown is only like about 9%. That means that it's two orders of magnitude faster. It works by setting a trace SecCom option for the tracer. And if, the, the, if a SECOM program has this SECOM trace rule, then independent of the way tracer was restarted, uh, when this SECOM rule is triggered, uh, the tracer will enter this new, new stop, which is similar to this call stop, but it is not this call stop. And at this point, it can it can use another way of restarting. Instead of syscall, it used betrace count so that it won't stop on uninteresting system calls. Another two interesting cases, like what if your tracer and your tracer spawns new processes and you want to, to trace them too? In the past, it used to be quite a, quite a work required from the tracer to follow clones, frogs, and rule frogs. Uh, because in the past, you had to convert this system call into clone with clone pedrace, like I said. It was a very awkward thing to do, like to change system calls. But fortunately, nowadays, nobody has to do this because there are options. Uh, you can set them if you want to trace your forks and clone, clone, proce and clone processes. And this way, they will be automatically traced and you can find out the, 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 the speed of them using the appropriate commands. So everything is easy nowadays with this. Another issue uh, happens uh, with following execs. It, it kind of simple, right? What could be simpler? But there is a common case which is quite interesting. For example, if there is a thread group and uh, uh, one thread, which is not a thread leader, uh, invokes an execuary system call, what happens? is that other threads are destroyed and this thread receives the change, essentially changes its thread ID and it confuses the tracer. You can imagine, like, if the tracer has seen the, the exit of the thread group leader, it looks, it looks like, uh, the, like after the death, uh, a new thread leader appears from nowhere and if it didn't see the death of the group leader, then it looks for the tracer as if uh, uh, execuation syscall is, is a return of a different system call. Or if there was no system call at this point, it looks like it, it's an exit from a system call which was not a system call at all. These all are artifacts of this ID group change. And fortunately, we have some methods to not to get lost because there is a, since Linux 3.0, there is a comment that allows us to, to find out the, 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 actual, the actual thread ID that was the, before the change. And the final bit in this picture is detaching. Like to detach, to detach a tracer, you need to issue a detach command, but it's a restarting operation, so it requires the tracer to be stopped. And what do you do if it's not stopped? If you're not stopped, you need to stop it somehow. Uh, traditionally, uh, you, you would send a six-stop signal and then wait for it to, to be, to, for the tracer to enter a signal delivery stop state. But this is a racy thing, like in case of the trace attach. Uh, one of six stops could be lost. And also, there is no guarantee that the next uh, stop after you send this six-stop would be actually a signal delivery stop. So it was very awkward. But fortunately, we have something better. Like nowadays, you can issue a trace interrupt command, and it will just stop the tracing, and without messing up with signals, uh, there would be some kind of stop. And at this point, you can issue this trace detach command and detach the tracing. This command, like trace 
Petrace list and Petrace interrupt, Petrace sees uh, edit altogether in Linux 3.4. So as I said before, uh, if you don't need to support all the kernels, just use this new interface. Uh, let's talk a bit about limitations because somehow they still have some. And first I would like to talk about something I found out while preparing this talk. Some people say uh, it's called uh, conference-driven research. So, as you, as you probably know, process can have several second filters, and if there are several of them, and they are all executed, and then the, the result of evaluation uh, is that the action value with the highest precedence is used. So, here is a list of action values in decreasing order of precedence. Can you spot something wrong with this? Well, secondary trace is not the highest priority. And what happens uh, when the trace has another second filter that returns an action value with a precedence higher than secondary trace? In that case, uh, the trace will not enter this trace event second stop. The trace will not be notified. And if another second filter, uh, for example, makes a skull fail or kill the trace or does something like this, then a trace in second mode will not be aware of that syscall invocation at all. This kind of defeats the very purpose of syscall tracing. For example, in modern container systems, it's not a rare thing to have some syscalls disabled. They won't be visible. So this happens because uh, in the kernel, uh, uh, the evaluation happens twice. Like, secomp trace, uh, if it has the highest precedence, then this event secomp happens, and then uh, secomp filters are evaluated second time, and well, if, why they do this? Because system call arguments could be changed, and syscall number could be. So if for the second evaluation, secomp trace is still the highest precedence, uh, then this action will happen, otherwise the other one. So, yeah, this is a problem. And uh, what I suggest doing with this is during the first evaluation of second filters, second pretrace should have the highest precedence. And during the second evaluation, the lowest. Uh, so that other lower precedence action could take effect if necessary. Uh, Security-wise, it's not a problem given that the tracer can interfere with syscalls at this is called enter stop anyway. Uh, another, another limitation that we have with uh, persistent filtering uh, is uh, what would happen when the tracer is gone. And the, the, like, because as we know, SICOM program can be added but can't be removed. So when the tracer is gone and there is still this SICOM retrace rule, so in that case, this call is not executed. Instead, they, it's, it fails with inosis, like in case of secompret uh, no, rule. And in most cases, Tracy is not prepared to handle the situation at all. And he most likely it would crash, or, well, anyway, all sorts of disaster may fall. Uh, so in, in a stress, we do all kinds of workarounds, like uh, Im imposing the trace or exit kill option that kills Tracy when there is no tracer and all, all kinds of them. But, uh, because, why, why do we do this? We want to, to ensure that a stress will not leave behind any unattended processes with a second program that it installed, because the trace is not prepared for this. But unfortunately, we're not there yet. So, what could be done with it? What if tracer could install on a tracy a filter that we will be tied to the tracer. For example, uh, like when the process ceases to be the tracer, all computer filters associated with the tracer could just automatically be removed or deactivated if removal is not practical. Like it could be like the trace at secom filter command or something like this. This would, this, this would essentially solve all these issues. But we have some other interfaces in the trace for example, it has a get filter that returns the array of all filters, and it has no means 
to return this new property if it would be there. So what would you do? It's unclear. And the final point from my kernel wish list I would, I would like to mention is Petrace sets is colon four. As you probably recall, the, the evolution of Petrace commands for obtaining syscall information from peak user through get rex and get rex set to Petrace get syscall in four. Uh, and similar thing happened to, uh, to other chain of commands for changing system call information, but the very last bit for changing them in architecture independent way is still missing. There is no Petri set syscall in four. Why do you think there is no such command yet? Well, because it's open source and nobody really cared to submit the patch. Yeah. That's mostly it. They, these slides are available at these links, and now I can answer some questions. Yeah, please. I will repeat the question. So, a very short question first. Um, can you inject the GPS program as a non When, when you are, when you, uh, so the question was, can you inject inject a BPF program as an unprivileged user. So what s does, uh, it, it creates this program before, forking, uh, uh, before, before tracing process. So it forks the process, and then it doesn't eject. It just installs uh, the filter in a regular way. So for, for tracing, it's not necessary. Well, you can do this. Uh, for some, a few years, oh, quite a long time ago, uh, actually, the Petrace API was extended for checkpoint restore uh, functionality, the way to, to obtain uh, second filters and to install them. But it's privileged. Unprivileged, you can only install it on yourself. So the question was about using signals uh, um, in the current scheme of things and whether using descriptors would be any better. But well, Actually, we use not signals, but we're using weight. We are not handling signals. We're using events returned by weight, weight PID or weight for system call. Uh, so I'm not sure reading, well, I mean, by reading, you could fetch like many Many events in one go. The tracer doesn't receive the signal. It yeah, but it can tell one from another. It's no longer an issue. The issue, what could be an issue, is that it takes only one event uh, at a time. And this could be, some, some say it's not, not good from the performance perspective. But maybe it's, not the, uh, maybe it's not that important because like the most slowdown happens on the chase side anyway because it's stopped. And the switch of context. And so on. Yeah, so a lot of things Things yet remains to do in Petrace, even though it's very old interface. Surprising. Any more questions? Okay. Um, is it possible with Trace to prevent a sys call from happening? So with the peak user interface, I didn't see you, like once you restart it, it pretty much does the sys call. You can, you, you can change the sys call number to any number, ah, uh, including out of the range of sys calls. Uh, this is how uh, the feature in a trace called uh, uh, 
fault injection works. We change this call number. Well, there are other ways to do this, but unfortunately, we are we run out of time. So thank you for attending.